What's up folks, this is Ref Bari, Brown University physics graduate student. Today I welcome you to the next episode of quantum field theory. I'm going to develop Feynman's path integral in this video. So by the end of this video, you will have a deep understanding of how quantum mechanics really works using Feynman's path integral formulation. So let's jump right in. We have no time to waste. The first thing I'm going to do is ask a simple question. Okay? Ask a simple question. Let's say you have an electron right here. Okay? An electron right here at point A. My question is, what is the probability that the electron, after some time t, ends up over there at point B? Feynman had a genius answer to this. Because in quantum mechanics, you see, there's no well-defined path that the electron takes from point A to point B. Even if I give you the initial conditions, the initial position or momentum of the electron, there's no way you can tell me the electron takes precisely this path between points A and point B. So what Feynman proposed was that instead of the electron going from point A to point B using this well-defined path, the electron takes all possible paths between point A to point B. So it takes this path, sure, but it also takes this one. It also takes this one. It also takes this one. But it doesn't stop there. The electron can also take paths that defy the conservation of energy. Okay? The electron can even go backwards. Okay? It can go on a path that looks like this. A path that goes backwards and then moves forwards. The electron can go like this and then go all the way back and then come back to B. Right? Weird, crazy paths like this are even possible according to Feynman's path integral formulation. The electron can even go faster than the speed of light. So it can go like, whoop, from point A to point B. Okay? So Feynman's path integral formulation says that literally all paths are possible, even the paths that violate the speed of light and the paths that violate the conservation of energy. Okay? So we're considering all possible paths here. Now, Feynman says that each one of these paths is weighted. It's weighted by some action. Okay? It's weighted by this, by this factor e to the i s over h bar. Okay? So e to the i s sub 1 over h bar. Let's say this is path 1. Okay? Let's say this is path 2. This path will be weighted by a factor of e to the i s 2 over h bar. Let's say this is the path 3. This will be weighted by a factor of e to the i s 3 over h bar. So on and so forth right? Each path is weighted by some proportionality factor e to the i s over h bar, where s is the action for that path. The action is a kind of mysterious, just, it's just a number that is associated with each of these paths. Remember from classical mechanics that the action is the time integral of the Lagrangian, okay? And where the Lagrangian is the kinetic minus the potential energy for the particle. So what Feynman says is that each of these paths has an action associated with it. And so if you want to figure out the total, the uh, path for the, for the particle, what you have to do is add up all of the actions. Okay? Sum over all the actions for all the paths. Okay? And that'll, that is the basic idea behind the Feynman path integral. Okay? To figure out the total behavior of the electron from point A to point B, you have to sum the action over all the paths, the exponential of the action over all the paths, and then you get your Feynman, Feynman path integral. That is the basic idea behind the path integral formulation of quantum mechanics, but now let's really make it quantitative. Let's, let's put it in action. Let's see how it works. What do is consider the following. Let's say we have our same thought experiment. We have time on the x uh, on the y-axis and position on the x-axis. I realize that maybe you don't see this far up. So how far up do you see? Okay. So let's say this is time on the y-axis. And again, we're going to consider the probability that an electron starts from here, call it point A, and makes it over here to point B. All right. That's what we're going to consider the probability that that happens. Okay. So let's say the the first thing I'm going to do is discretize. I'm going to slice up time into discrete chunks, okay? So I'm discretizing time as follows into equal intervals, 
or is equal as my chalk will allow. Okay, and let's say my electron starts from here, point A. Let's say it goes to some random point over here, and then it goes over here. I'm just drawing a random path, one of the infinite possible paths that the electron can traverse from point A to point B. Okay, and so this is the picture, right? We have discretized space and time to come up with Feynman's path integral formulation. Each one of these little chunks of time is of order delta t. And let's say that this is the particle's initial position, q sub a, and it, it's at a time t sub a, for example. Let's say that this is the particle's second position, q sub 1. This is the third position, q sub 2. This is the fourth, q sub 3, q sub 4, so on and so forth, right? Until the particle gets to its final destination, q sub b, at some time, t sub b. Okay, so very good. What we're going to do now is form the propagator that tells us the probability amplitude that the electron goes from point A to point B. So remember, the propagator K tells us the probability amplitude that the electron uh, starts from, it ends up over here, QB, TB, when starting from QA, TA. Okay, this is the Feynman propagator, or actually this is just the regular quantum mechanical propagator I just wrote down here, okay? So this is equal to just my regular propagator, QB, TB, and QA, TA. Now I'm going to do something wild. Now you see, I have to account for all the possible paths from point A to point B, right? This is obviously not the only path, right? Because for example, I could have taken a completely different path from point A to point B. So what I have to do is vary each of these points. I have to be able to move around each one of these points. And I have to sum over all the possible paths by moving each one of these paths, each one of these lattice points horizontally. So how do I move each of these lattice points horizontally? Well, what I have to do is I have to expand the position state of each one of these lattice points as follows, using the completeness relation of momenta. So if I use the completeness relation for momenta, I can expand out the position states as follows, right? And that's what we're going to do uh, for the Feynman path integral. We're going to expand out the position states as follows so that we can move around each one of these lattice points and generate all the possible paths from point A to point B. So for example, this would generate an alternative path as follows, right? This is just the big picture idea behind the Feynman path integral. The actual derivation will take one hour, which I do not have time for in this lecture, but I will show in tomorrow's lecture. So the big picture is that I'm going to start with the non-relativistic, this classical quantum mechanical propagator that follows from this, and then I'm going to expand out the position states uh, as follows, so that I can move each of these lattice points and generate all the possible paths from point A to point B. So thank you for watching this rather brief lecture. I'll see you in tomorrow's lecture, where I'm going to derive the Feynman path integral in its entirety.